You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement. Hi, I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and this is Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. I have a guest with me today because we want to talk about being prepared for emergencies. This is Bill Ring. He's the Emergency Management Director for Ellis County. And Bill, I wanted to talk to you about why is it even important for individuals or co-workers at work to think about being prepared for disasters? Because at times it may take us a while to get to you. It depends on the incident. Um, we have 27,000 people in Ellis County and we have maybe 200 responders. And if we have a large impact, as in, say, a Greensburg type event, probably half of those won't be able to come because their homes might have been destroyed. They may have an issue. So, so being self-reliant is extremely important, especially in the first few hours. And so if we were going to think about um, being prepared, we're not just talking about tornado season, right? You mentioned a Greensburg, but what, what are some other things that we might want to think about? I know we live in western Kansas, and it's been a while since we've had heavy rain, but we could have a flooding event. I mean, back in the early 90s, we had a few years where it got uh, pretty crazy downtown Hayes um, and out in the country. We could have um, a winter storm like we had February of 13, where all of a sudden we had just under two, two foot of snow dumped on us and traffic's impassable. So, you know, and then you've got your normal summertime tornado events and severe weather. Um, we've got in the country, we've got a lot of fires when it's dry. Last year in the month of March, I believe we had almost 40 fires. So it's never too early to actually think about <clears throat> what am I going to do when it's happening because you don't want to try to figure it out at that time. I think that's great advice. If we think ahead, then we will have thought through some of those kinds of actions, either the kinds of equipment we need to gather, how we're going to react. Um, I'm thinking like, uh, who, who, who's going to call the relatives and tell them that half the town blew away if there's no phone system? Or maybe we're going to talk about um, how we're, where we're going to gather once we get out of a house that's burning. So there's lots of things to think about. Exactly, and that's um, one of the important things is to have a plan. I do planning most of my day. I don't do a lot of disaster response, which is a good thing, but everyone should have a plan. There should be a plan for your home, for your children, a reunification point. If you have a business or you work in a business, they should have some kind of a plan. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. And there's a lot of available help online. Um, the federal government with FEMA has a website called ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y dot gov, and they've got a, a vast assortment of information on how to write a plan for you. you just fill in the blanks. It's really interesting. <laughs> That's great. But it sounds overwhelming to try to think about preparing your home or preparing your business uh, for a disaster. But K-State Research and Extension has a program that can help get you motivated and help walk you through the tasks um, a step at a time. The Prepare Kansas program will have you uh, do one, two, maybe three tasks a week during September to get prepared. We'll be back with another guest to talk more about how this online preparedness challenge works for folks in Kansas. Bill, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, we got some really great information from Bill Ring about why we ought to think about being prepared for emergencies and natural disasters. We want to talk more about an extension program that can help you organize your home and family or even maybe your workplace uh, to prepare for disasters. I've got a guest with me today. This is Jamie Rathbun. Jamie's the County Extension Agent for Family Consumer Sciences in Midway Extension District, and her office is in Ellsworth, Kansas. And the reason Jamie is with me today is because she is one of the originators of the Prepare Kansas Online Challenge, which introduces Kansans to a step-by-step -step way to begin some disaster preparedness. Jamie, I'm so glad you could come over and be with us today. We appreciate that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what this Prepare Kansas online challenge is all about? Um, it's exactly as you said, Linda. It's a, an online challenge uh, that lasts through the month of September. We focus on September because that's National Preparedness Month. Mm -hmm. Each week through September, we're, we have a theme of the activities and the items that we want you to learn um, and things to focus on 
you will be have two challenge tasks to complete each week to to have your family, your office, um, even your classroom become more prepared. And two then, a week doesn't sound terribly overwhelming. No, two okay. a week is is not bad at all. <laughs> Good. Um, and then. Extension will send you helpful tips, information, um, and other other ideas to help you become more prepared to learn more about disaster preparedness uh, through email, and we also have a blog. So this is an online program. People can enroll individually as uh, just as individuals. They can work together as families, or they can participate with the um, plan of organizing their workplace or their school uh, schoolroom or their daycare um, uh, as a group. So we're going to do two tasks a week. Tell us what we're going to do uh, in 2015. In 2015, we're really focused on focusing on being prepared ahead of natural disasters or even disasters that may only affect your family. Um, fires, floods, tornadoes, extreme heat events such as extreme or extreme temperatures, um, extreme heat or extreme cold um, can all be um, natural disaster type things that can happen that our family is going to be, need to be prepared um, ahead of time for. And this is the second year that K-State Research and Extension has um, hosted or offered the Prepare Kansas Online Challenge. Jamie was involved in creating this event in 2014. And tell us what happened as a result. Were people in Kansas getting prepared? People in Kansas were getting prepared. We had just over 400 participants that were from 63 different counties across the state. Great. Um, the majority of our participants attempted to complete um, all of the challenge tasks, we had about half of them complete at, each, at least one challenge task each week, um, which we thought was, was a definite positive for the program. Um, completing at least four tasks throughout the month was, was very, very good, and those folks are more prepared in case something would happen to their family. Exactly. Well, um, what do we know about people that are, be, that are um, prepared or not prepared? <laughs> Uh, here in Kansas and maybe elsewhere around the nation. Are, are we generally well-prepared folks? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Uh, across the nation, disasters affect nearly one million people each year, and more than 85% of Americans are not prepared at all, Linda. 62% um, of Americans have not built any sort of disaster supply kit with the items that they might need in the event of an emergency situation. Um, and nearly 50% have not thought about how they're going to evacuate their family from whatever location they're at in the event of something happening. And we heard Bill say earlier that um, just based on sheer numbers of the people who live in our city, for example, and the number of first responders that are there, we need to count on be, uh, being able to take care of ourselves for a while because it may be a difficult task to have one of those rescue workers ultimately get to us. Well, one of the uh, tasks, or actually let's, let's talk first about how we get involved in this and then we need to talk a little bit about some of the things that are here on this table. So how do we participate in Prepare Kansas? As Linda said before, it is an online challenge, so we're going to have you sign up online at the blog site for Prepare Kansas, blogs.k-state.edu backslash Prepare Kansas, um, and there will be a link right in the upper right-hand corner to sign up for the challenge. Registration is open right now. Um, the challenge begins on September 1st and registration will close on September 6th. So you can continue to sign up through the first week of September. Um, and then the part or the challenge itself will end on September 30th September on the last 30th. day. So if you register a little late, know that you've got fewer days to complete those first two tasks for the first week. Uh, we'd sure love to get you registered even before the end of August to be able to participate. Well, we've got all these things, Jamie. Talk with us a little bit about why we're showing some of these items and how that relates to Prepare Kansas 2015. Um, as the 2015 challenge, um, as we're gearing up for that, 
a lot of our focus this year is going to be on developing that disaster supply kit, something that you might keep in your basement, in the trunk of your car, in the desk of your office. That way, wherever you are, you, you have the, the essential items that you might need um, for whatever the, the disaster is that's happening at the time. We have some food here. Um, if I needed to shelter in my basement in rural Ellsworth County for a day or two until rescue workers found me, myself and my family members are probably going to get hungry. So we have some food here. I would say don't forget if you're packing canned food in that kit to also have a can opener so you can open it. Great idea. <laughs> we've also got water, which is here at the far mm -hmm. end of our table as well, something that we've got to have mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Linda has a bicycle helmet out here, which would be great because if you are in your basement and you're sheltering from a tornado, don't forget that there can be um, debris flying around. And the same goes even if you're not in a basement. If you're just in the interior of your home, there may be um, tree limbs or pieces of wood, items right. falling off the wall, and we'd want to protect our, our heads as well. Um, we have a fire extinguisher um, as a fire is one of the... Um, things that we're focusing on this year with the challenge, one of the themes that we're taking on, but also um, you just don't know what you might encounter should gas lines break or oh, electrical exactly. lines are sparking. Um, obviously a, a lantern, um, if the electricity's out, we're going to want to be able to see. I have very young children um, and I would not want to be without diapers for them if I was in my basement for a couple of days. Um, and then I would say the number one, one of the number one items that you're definitely going to want in that is um, a whistle. Because if I was here in Hayes, and as um, you guys talked about earlier, if, you, if it's taking them a couple of days to find you, your voice only lasts so long, especially with rubble and dust and those kinds of things. But it's very easy to blow on a whistle and those rescue workers can find you. Exactly. I've also brought a notebook where um, last year as part of the Prepare Kansas Challenge, I organized some of my financial records so that in case my home is destroyed or in case I have to evacuate for uh, some time, I've got information available here that can help me um, establish who I am during the disaster and can help me rebuild afterwards. And Jamie, I carry my notebook around if I have to leave. I take it with me outside. If I have to shelter in place, I grab this and take it with me to the basement so that I've got it. And I do carry it in a little string backpack that um, is reflective and uh, helps me be able to keep a hold of this important information and keep my hands free. So we need to encourage people to enroll in the Prepare Kansas online challenge. If you're interested, certainly um, take a look on the internet. We've got some basic materials that can remind you of the um, registration website. And we'd like to make sure that you participate with us in Prepare Kansas online challenge 2015. Well, thanks, Jamie, for being with me today. I appreciate all that you and our State Extension Financial Management Specialist have done to organize this online challenge. And as a participant last year, I want to be able to assure you that this is a step-by-step, -step, much easier way to think about starting to organize your home for lots of kinds of disasters. Well, if you need more information about Prepare Kansas, talk to your local county extension office. Um, they will be able to point you in the right direction to get enrolled or to get more information. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and this has been Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. This show is brought to you by Carico Implement.